Welcome in this video of the House of Asian Cinema. When we talk about Hong Kong action cinema, the big names are known and appreciated by most of the critics and moviegoers around the world. From Lo Carlon to John Woo, they are almost unanimously admired and recognized. But there are other directors who have contributed to the rise of Hong Kong cinema and have produced quality works that have unfortunately found themselves drawn in the crowd. One of these filmmakers is Tony Liu. In this video, we will review the actor-director's career and try to understand what he brought to Hong Kong cinema. Tony Liu began his career in the industry at the very beginning of the 1970s joining the Café Drama School, Shaw Brothers' great competitor for Mandarin films, in order to become an actor. He therefore logically appears in the studio's production during his first performances. But Café was then in sharp decline, and very quickly, Tony Liu found himself scouring the small world of independent films. His physique did not really allow him to obtain the leading heroic roles, so he became a very active supporting actor. The combined influence of Shang-Chi and Bruce Lee in the 1970s made Kung Fu films fashionable and it was therefore in this genre, while he had no particular martial art training, that it specialized very quickly. He appeared in many such films shot in South Korea, such as Crush or Action Taekwondo. His versatility and availability even led him to work for Shaw Brothers or Golden Harvest. Tony Liu, the actor, had a pretty successful career, but the man clearly yearned for more within the industry. <laughs> and as early as 1974, Tony Liu took advantage of the global craze for Kung Fu films to become a director. Barely over 20 years old, he made his first martial arts films, Tough Guy and Trail of the Dragon. Two works strongly influenced by Bruce Lee's films directed by Low Wei. Tough Guy, also known as The Black Dragon, has everything of a mock remake of the Big Boss located in the Philippines instead of Thailand. The shadow of the Little Dragon continued to hang over his work of the time as he made the following year the Bruce Plotation film The Death of Bruce Lee in which the impressive American martial artist Ron Van Cleef on try to get his hands on a martial art manual written by Lee. If Tony Liu managed to establish himself as a director of Kung Fu films during this period and to offer fairly entertaining work, he remained a minor filmmaker. Surfing on the trends of the moment without succeeding in imposing his personality or proposing original approach in his work. When Chang Chi's Shaolin cycle triumphed at the box office, he signed a very average Strangers from Shaolin. When Kung Fu comedy became the new flavor of the day, he directed the likable The Dragon and the Tiger Kid. But there was nothing to suggest that he would sign qualitatively much superior works during the following decades. In 1980, Tony Liu joined Shaw Brothers. His recruitment was part of a studio policy of regaining the favor of the Hong Kong public by giving young talents a chance. Several directors from the new wave were thus hired by the venerable studio with uneven results. Tony Liu was a more modest take for show compared to Han Hoi or Alex Chung. Specialized in Kung Fu films, he was there mostly to contribute in supplying the production chain with costumed action films, show specialty, and maintain a constant presence in cinemas linked to the firm. But Tony Liu acquitted himself of this task with a talent that his career in independent action cinema did not allow to suspect. His first film, The Master, followed in the footsteps of what he had done when he was working as a freelancer, 
being a kung fu comedy in the same mold as the ones popularized by Jackie Chan and Sammo Hung. The star of the film, Yun Tak, is also a former student of Yu Ji Myun's China Drama Academy. An authentic vehicle intended to launch him as a rival to his former classmates, the film failed to establish him as a new action star. It's a shame because Tony Liu, with the help of choreographer Choi Ha, staged virtuoso fights that are not far from rivaling with what the leading directors of the genre did. The fault may be an additional lack of originality that would have allowed it to stand out from the competition. He did inject more originality into his next two Kung Fu films, Ambitious Kung Fu Girl and Lover's Blade. What sets them apart is the very marked presence of comedy, sometimes bordering on parody. Michelle Yim, the ambitious kung fu girl of the title, acts as a groupie of the pop singers of the moment. It is also with these films that the director began to, to fully assume his taste for speed when it comes to martial arts battles. Tony Liu used with astonishing talent under cranking, that is shooting at less than 24 frames per second, to give increased dynamism to the fights. So he could, when we, uh, Hong Kong, 有十二點五夜長嘛,咁佢睇觀眾嘅反應呢,就嗰啲嗰啲戲呢一定嘅tempo快脆,即係唔好拖,唔好拖,所以佢捉到觀眾嗰個節奏感,同埋嗰部戲
The closure of Movie Town in 1985 put an end to his blessed period for Tony Liu, and he returned to the small world of independent Hong Kong cinema. It was not an easy journey. Kung Fu and Wu Shapian, the two genera in which he has specialized in, had gone out of fashion. He therefore had to reinvent himself and it proved difficult. The Hunting Madame, which he directed in 1986, testified to this disorientation, the film going in all possible and imaginable directions for a result that is certainly entertaining but fundamentally disconcerting. Fortunately for him, the industry was then of unparalleled dynamism and other trends were appearing. In 1985, DNB released the Kung Fu Police film Yes Madame, making Michelle Liu and Cynthia Rothrock action stars. Corey Yoon's film initiated the Girls with Guns subgenre, urban action films featuring heroines instead of the usual male heroes. First, the prerogative of big studios like DNB and Golden Harvest, the subgenre lost momentum after a few years. But while Hong Kong audience moved on other cinematic universe, the international market remained strong enough for Girls with Guns to exist and the world of independent cinema took over. And that's where Tony Liu came in. The director established himself as the specialist in Girls with Guns films. Between 1989 and 1994, Tony Liu signed no less than 11 films that can be assimilated to this subgenre. If all are not masterpieces, he regularly managed to propose quality works, some of them among the best the Girls with Guns made in Hong Kong could offer. With David Hunters, he signed one of the most energetic B-movie Hong Kong cinema ever made, which highlights is its suicidal final stunt. In Dreaming the Reality, he offered one of the most interesting dramatic parts to the talented Moon Lee. For Angel Terminators 2, he did the same to the other star of the genre, the Japanese Yukari Oshima, and even addressed social issues related to the situation of youth in Hong Kong. In The Big Deal, he mocked the genre in which he worked so intensively, signing nothing less than the ultimate parody of Girls with Guns. Hey, oh. If Corey Yoon can rightly be called the father of Girls with Guns and its best illustrator, Tony Liu comes just behind, having contributed to make this subgenre one of the most fun in the history of Hong Kong cinema. The crisis of Hong Kong cinema, starting from the second half of the 1990s, had a major impact on the world of independent filmmaking. It was the small-scale producers who had the greatest difficulty in continuing their activities. Their already tight budgets fell even further. Tony Liu tried to continue working in this new configuration, but his films suffered the consequences. Looking like made-for-TV films, without the energy that had characterized his cinema so far, they are only the sad shadow of his earlier works. Tony Liu himself understood that the party was over, and he ended his career in 2000. He died a few years later in general indifference. No newspaper reported his death, the proof that despite an impressive productivity and some high quality works to his credit, he had not succeeded in imposing his mark on the industry and the popular culture of the city. In the quasi-apocalyptic landscape of commercial Hong Kong cinema today, it's very difficult to detect any legacy from Tony Liu. But his work during the industry's heyday, the 1980s to mid-1990s, helped define Hong Kong cinema around the world. Punchy B-movies characterized by a hectic pace and actors ready to take all the risks to entertain the spectators. In a way, Tony Liu is the ultimate craftsman of Hong Kong cinema. A little master of exploitation, a filmmaker who never reinvented the industry, but always knew how to give the best of the different trends initiated by his more famous colleagues. During his nearly 30 years career, it's the five years he spent at Show Brothers, which are the most noteworthy, when he achieved an impressive degree of cinematic mastery. It was there that he made his very best films, aggressive and ultra-rhythmic Wu Pian, 
with contagious energy. Unfortunately, the prejudice associated with the end of the studio and the inability to see the show catalog for years prevented Tony Liu from having the recognition he was due. We can hope that this wrong will now be repaired by fans of Hong Kong cinema.